right, this is the video for the second grouping practice for our class. So we have here um, four terms. We need to look for a GCF, and I look for a number first. One, three, two, six, doesn't look like there's a GCF. So we can go ahead and start with grouping. There's no X's in every term. So we start by grouping the first two terms together and the last two terms together. From each step, we look for a GCF. So to start, it looks like we have x squared in both. Right? x squared is the smallest exponent that goes into both terms. So I pull that x squared out in front. And when I divide, I subtract exponent. 3 minus 2 is x to the first. Here the x's cancel, but I have a plus 3. In this group, because this term is positive, I'm going to divide out a positive GCF. 2x and 6 have a 2 in common. So I pull out a positive 2, and when I divide, 2x divided by 2 is just x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. All right, the good things that happen here, the parentheses are the same. That is one factor. And then the GCFs from out in front become the other factor. So that is your final answer. If you want to check, you would have to use the distributive property here. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 2 is plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 6. Now it's in a different order, these ones, but they're the same values as up on top, so we know we factor it correctly. Number 10. Let's see, GCF 20, 12, 25, 15, doesn't look like a GCF, so we can go ahead and start grouping. From the first group, I have 20n cubed and 12n squared. Looks like there's a number, I can put 4 into both, and they both have n, so I take the smaller exponent, which is n squared out. Alright, I pull out a 4n squared. And left inside my parentheses, 20 divided by 4 is 5n. Here the n squares cancel, but I do have plus 3. On this side, it looks like 5 goes into both, and I'm going to use a positive 5 because the sign's positive. Pull that out. 25 divided by 5 is 5n plus 3. <coughs> so again, Good things because 5n plus 3 shows up in both parentheses. And then the GCFs from out in front come down. I can't factor anything anymore, so that's my final answer. My last one is number 16. This one has a lot of letters, but it's really not going to be that bad. First of all, though, I'm going to start by looking for a GCF. It does seem like 6 goes into every term. So I'm at least going to pull a 6 out. And then, let's see, we have A, A, oh, no A's. Nope, it looks like just 6. So I'm going to pull out a GCF of 6, which here will give me A, W, minus 6, A, K. The 6 cancels off here again, so plus B squared, W, minus 6, B squared K. So it looks really yucky, but it's going to work out. Leave the 6 in front. We're just going to group like usual. So that 6 I write down again in front of my parentheses. A, W, and 6, A, K. Both have an A. So that's all I'm going to pull out here is an A in front. And when I pull that A out, the A's go away, and I have W minus 6K. The second step, they both have B squared. I'm going to pull out a positive B squared because the sign is positive. Inside those parentheses, that cancels. I'm left with W minus 6K. So even though it looks gross, it's a good thing because the parentheses are the same. The 6 comes down in front. The W minus 6K is one factor. 
and the a plus b squared is another factor. And that's it. There is no other factoring you can do, so that would be your final factor form from grouping. If you have questions on the other problems, ask the teacher for help or check the key on Canvas.